great effort there in the second half. Can you just uh, take us through what it, what it felt like in the locker room? Had a lot of family here from growing up back in the church days. That sounds like the second verse, same hymnal. You know, I've said this so many times this year, but I could not be more proud of our group for um, playing against a team that's going to be in the NCAA tournament, that's going to be uh, better than top half seed. Um, I wouldn't want to see Missouri in our bracket. Um, but we keep finding ways. You know, we uh, 51 points and a half on those guys is it's hard to do. And most groups would give up. This group doesn't. They just keep coming at it, and they're talking about already going to A&M and couldn't be, couldn't be more proud of them and for them. So what was going on there in the first half with both teams? Was it just missing shots? Here's what happens. When you get as much film out on each other as is out, look at all the scores in our league tonight. You know what's coming. You give Todd Schaefer – 14 games of film, and you give their staff 14 games of film, there are no secrets. So it's the adjustments. And even if you made a few adjustments, it's just so hard, you know. I thought, I thought the difference in their game was Jordan Roundtree getting off to a great start. When we decided to do what we were doing with Sophie, I thought she hit some big shots in the first half. And uh, we'll probably keep our streak alive. Every, it seems like every week, whoever we play is SEC Player of the Week. So a uh, good chance that could happen again. <laughs> but I thought she was key. Um, I think it's a product of each other knowing each other. We play these guys twice every year. There's no secrets. Jalen Mason knows what Sophie's going to do before she does it, and that's why she does a great job on her. We play each other so much. And then you, you make a few adjustments at halftime, and it's more entertaining. I, I, I will not rewatch the first half, but I'll watch the second half just for fun sometime this summer. That had to be fun to watch. I don't know. Wasn't much fun to coach in, but – what was different for y'all and then movement. fourth quarter what was different for them movement for us we you know we talked about if you stand in one spot against these guys you're never going to get a good shot and we just put in a little simple thing at halftime where we run an exchange with Chelsea and Jalen and um, Allen uh, Lex on that side and we got better shots and we made a few more I thought we missed a couple that we normally make too so that's a product of fatigue. You know, Chelsea had to play 40 minutes tonight. Mal played a whole bunch of minutes. But the pace in the first half was so slow. I don't know how many times they got the shot clock under 10, but a bunch. So it wasn't your normal pace game. But, you know, we needed to be able to turn our, their 21 turnovers into more than 11 points. I'm looking at that, and that's a frustration thing because if we turn somebody over 21 times, it's normally 21 points. And tonight it was only 11. So, um, you know, we've got we've to continue um, – to look for the good things that we do, and there's a lot of them to look for tonight. This is the last home game for these seniors. How would you sum up each of their careers here at Arkansas? Well, we have every intention of going down and winning the SEC tournament next week. We really do. We'll see what happens. But if not, I still think we're going to have a home game. I know our administration is very supportive of the postseason. There's never been a team above 500 in a Power 5 conference not invited to the NIT. We're going to be above 500, obviously. Our RPI is going to be in the top 100. I think we're going to do everything we can do to get another home game back here, not only for those kids but for our fans. Our fans really came out this year. It was cold outside. It was an 8 o'clock tip. All the people that use it, you know, all the excuses you normally lose, we still had a good crowd. Um, and our people that support us, our chalk talk was as full as it's been all year. So the people that have supported us continue to support us all the way through. So we're going to do everything we can do to get a home game back. And, you know, we'll go down and get A&M and see what happens. There's been seven and nine teams, you know, get in in the past. It's a crazy year in the country. There's going to be – the NCAA committee's got their work cut out for them. Um, let's give them something to talk about, you know. I think A&M won tonight, didn't they? Yeah. They beat Kentucky. So, you know, you beat those guys, that's another marquee win. We, we do not have a bad loss on our schedule. You look at our resume, we don't have a bad loss. We don't have a lot of quality wins, but we don't have a bad loss. And, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I, I do not begin to predict what this team's capable of because I still tell you we haven't played as good as we could play. Um, do you think they did anything, anything particular on the boards tonight get, to get 22 more rebounds than you guys? They're just good at it, and we don't really focus on it. I think it's a product of that. We try to get more shots by turning people over. So we're plus 17 on the turnovers. They're plus 22 on the boards. That's a give and take. But uh, they're a good rebounder. I mean, they're good rebounders. Sophie Cunningham's always been a good rebounder. Sierra Porter's always been a good rebounder. Amber Smith, that's what she's made her name on. So they're more of a rebounding team. We're more of a turn-you-over, don't-turn-it-over team. Two clashes of styles. But 
I think they focus on it a lot more than we do. Uh, could you talk about just the growth uh, over the course of the year now uh, from the first home game to this game now? For, for us? Team? Yeah, for you guys. Oh, we're a completely different team. Um, you know, I was talking actually to Jordan Dupay, the coach from Northwestern State, and he had seen us on TV, and he said, man, I'm glad I didn't play that team. Uh, I think we've continued to massively improve. I hope that continues to be a hallmark of our teams that we peak at in, in late February and early March. Um, you know, the fact that uh, – we continue to play fast, but only turn it over four times. That means we're hooked up. It means we're dialed in. It means our kids have not given up on themselves or on each other. And that's really encouraging for a coach and a staff in year two. You talked tonight about how familiar these two teams are with each other. Same thing this Sunday with A&M and Gary. Are yeah. Any secrets? No, but he'll change all his play calls. He always does. He'll trick us on the first play. He'll change the play call. And I've told him to stop doing it because I really don't care. But he, he, we will know each other. We will know the styles. Um, you know, I, th I think that is the team. When you look at what A&M done, has done and what he's done, is phenomenal. Losing Andriel Howard and losing Danny Williams and plugging in who they've got and they're going to finish in. Are, are they going to get a bye? Has anybody look? I mean, they're close. they got to be close to getting a bye in the tournament. And – you know, he's my coach. He's my vote for conference coach of the year based on what he's done. So, um, style of play will be fun to watch. Uh, I hope we, I hope we recover from this pretty quick and load up and go down there. And it, it should be entertaining. I, I can't wait to see Chelsea and uh, Kennedy going at it. And we can do all of. Remember, I already said we can do this. If y'all want to do all of Texas A and M right now, so we don't have to get together. I'm going to be recruiting tomorrow. There's a bunch of tournaments going on, so if y'all have got A&M questions, I'll save y'all from if you'll bring me an ice cream like you brought baseball. What the hell? What the hell? Not tomorrow. We ain't having one. We've only had about 18 of these. So we can we can finish Missouri, obviously, but we can roll into Missouri, uh, a and too. I'll take well, my jacket off so it looks like a different day. <laughs> So it's good to be here today for Texas A&M. Uh, <laughs> guys, if you can't have fun at this profession, you better just get out of it because it'll drive you crazy. Uh, yeah. Still uh, A&M? How, how do you follow that up? Uh, <laughs> you, you really need someone to start kind of hitting there late, and toll-free was really – She has, and I'm so proud of her, you know. Um, if I can tell you the number of friends and buddies of mine that wanted me to change the lineups, and they just don't come to practice every day. That kid's fought, and she, you knew she's going to be about a 35, 30 to 35% shooter this year. You knew it was coming. Four of nine tonight. She's got the step back, and I'm proud of her. She's fought through an awful lot. It's not an easy transition to do uh, what she did, and really, 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 really proud of her. It is. Um, I, I want to see Kennedy and Chelsea kind of going at it. You know, I, I think Kayla Wells has also had an all-conference type season. I, um, it's a fun environment. If you've ever, never been to a game in, in College Station, it's a fun atmosphere. I think it's a great way to wrap the season up. Um, there's an awesome concert the night before with Josh Abbott Band and Wade Bowen, and we're going to go have a good time. The kids won't go to it because they hate my style of music. But College Station's a fun town. It's a great college atmosphere. Anytime you're playing in a gym that's got a national championship banner hanging up, you know they support women's basketball. They'll have a huge crowd. It'll be a lot of fun. Go. Well, you, you've got to make her shoot it over you, not around you, enough. She's going to make a bunch of them, and it's just so hard not to get your head down when she does make one that's contested. But I'll tell you that we've had, we've had a full year of defending in practice a kid a lot like her in Amber Ramirez. So, you know, Amber's already lighting up going, I get to be me, I get to be me, and shoot it like that. So it, it'll be fun. I, I think Jalen Mason has accepted the role of, hey, I'm going to contest every shot and make her make a few of those. you, you got to keep her off the foul line. If you let her do uh, what she does with, with not getting to the foul line and then add the free throws, that's why she's who she is. But – uh, make her make some tough shots. Um, she can get frustrated at times, but you've got to give her a reason to get frustrated. If you let her get in takeover mode, there's absolutely nothing game plan wise you can do. Hope she misses. All right. Thanks, everybody.